comedy salute to baseball. Starring Howard Cosell, Steve Garvey, Dwight Gooden, Reggie Jackson, Tommy Lasorda, Mickey Mantle, Bob Newhart, Daredevil Super Dave Osborne, Father Guido Sarducci, George Steinbrenner, Bob Euchre, and Betty White with special appearances by Pat Boone and Jamie Farr. Featuring Franklin Ajay, Marty Cohen, and Mike Walden. And your host, Billy Crystal. Ooh, the babe is looking real angry up there. These Chicago Cubs have been taunting the babe, and you can't do that. The babe just pointed out to the center field, which means he's calling a shot. He's telling the Cubs he's going to hit one right out there into the center field bleachers. And if anybody can do it, it's the Sultan of Swat. Number three, the incredible... The... <laughs> Hi, I'm Billy Crystal, and I'm standing here at the entrance of the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. And tonight, I'm your host for an all-star comedy salute to my best friend, baseball. You know, comedy and baseball are a really terrific combination. Well, you know that. You've seen the Dodger fielding this year. <laughs> but this place is steeped in history and lore. As a matter of fact, about a block from here, in 1839, Abner Doubleday invented the game of baseball. And it's almost 150 years later, and the rules are pretty much the same. And the bases shall be 90 feet apart, the pitcher shall stand 60 feet 6 inches from home plate, and the Cleveland Indians shall finish in last place. <laughs> What Doubleday couldn't possibly have known was that his little invention would give us these great stars and legends, and they're all immortalized here. Great stars like Lou Gehrig, the Say Hey Kid, Willie Mays, Joe and Joe DiMaggio, Ted Williams, Satchel Paige. Pretty great, huh? All of these men deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. But there's one guy who's been driving us crazy all week. He's been campaigning to be in the Hall of Fame. It's your friend and ours, Bob Euchre. You know Bob Euchre, the guy in the front row, all right? This is a guy who played Major League Baseball, had a 200 lifetime average, never got past third base in his career, and he's actively been campaigning that Bob Euchre should be in the Hall of Fame. Now we're going to let you, the baseball fans of America, say what you think. If you want to vote yes on Euchre, call 1-900-220-2111. If you want to vote no on Euchre, call 1-900-220-2122. Each phone call will cost 50 cents, and NBC's portion of phone proceeds will be donated to charity. Now, our phone lines will be open until 6 p.m. tomorrow, and the results will be announced on tomorrow night's All-Star pregame show. All-Star Sports with Henderson Keene and Bumper Keneal. Good evening, and welcome to our special baseball edition. Player manager Pete Rose of the Cincinnati Reds fined himself $5,000 today. Seems Pete caught himself breaking curfew. Pete said, and we quote, I'm going to give myself one more chance, and if I don't shape up, I'm going to fire myself. You can't have me being a disruptive influence on my younger players. Please understand, I have nothing against me personally. Quite a spokesman for the me generation. Well, the San Diego chicken was traded to Philadelphia today in exchange for the Philly fanatic and a duck to be named later. Philly's owner Bill Giles said, I feel that the chicken will be just what's needed to boost sagging Philly attendance. Besides, we need the eggs. <laughs> Umpire Stretch McNally refused to work a scheduled game yesterday after the other three members of the crew declined to admit which of them had eaten a time-release enchilada for lunch. <laughs> well, here we see former all-star Johnny Bench reacting to a teammate's practical joke, which involved leaving Johnny's shorts overnight in a vat of jalapeno bean dip. Or jalapeno dip or salsa, or anything hot. That all makes the joke work. You know, it happened to so many of the people who happen to be in the baseball, I would think. So you those my friends, and you know who you are. <laughs> Darlings, I'm in the hideaway today with one of the biggest names in baseball. It's got 12 letters in it. I counted it myself. One of them? You are the biggest oh, name. All right. Isn't he marvelous? He's so outspoken. Like, now, please welcome the principal owner of the New York Yankees. We'll find out exactly what that means. Mr. Jorge Steinbrenner. George, how are you? Hello, the way, darling. Fernando, thank you. Thank you. George, first of all... Ask me, ask me. I gotta tell you, darling, from the bottom of my heart, you look 
impressive. You up close, I really? tell you, you look marvelous, darling. Thank you very much. It's fabulous, you know, and for me, I would rather look good than to feel good, and you know who you are. George, <laughs> I had not been a fan of the baseball, you know, for a long time, because I come from where we play soccer, you know, and chase wild dogs. But well, let me ask you this. I started watching a lot of the Yankee games, and I wanted to ask you one Yankee, qu Yankee. Whatever. Let me ask you this. Reggie does not play. Is he hurt? I keep looking. Reggie is not, not out there. I heard Reggie, Reggie, and he's not out there. Where is he well, hurt? What's uh, the lowdown? This could be a scoop. <laughs> it would be a scoop. Uh, Reggie is with another team. He is with California. That was a bad mistake some of my people made. Who are these people? Well, they're not around here. They're not here anymore. Oh, because yeah. I'd say if Reggie's not here, we could go and beat them around the head. That's you know, because right. Reggie's not here. Yeah. What was his candy bar like? Did you like that? <laughs> well, uh, it was terrible. The candy bar was terrible, but Reggie was great. And not when he had to catch a fly ball. I heard that his face had a better pocket than his glove, if well, you know what I'm saying to you. Yeah, well, we didn't hire him for his glove. We hired him for his bat. Uh, did he yeah. bring his own bat? No. No, we had to buy a lot of them. Do you pay for that, too? I pay for everything. These players, I tell you, I You're don't right. know. They You're right. get everything. You buy their bats for them? I have to buy everything. Everything. The gloves, the socks? The gloves, the socks, the other thing. Well, I know what you're yeah, talking yeah. about. <laughs> because, George, yes. you are an athletic supporter from yes, way you back. You believe it. Thank you very I'll much. tell you that right now. Is he, is he marvelous? Yes, yes, He's a yes. kid. Thank you very much. George, what is your definition of love? My definition of love? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh what the players have for me. <laughs> and I think you may be right. You may be onto something, George, yes. because they show up every day. You they know, do. And, they play. and even some days when we're not playing, they have to show up. Well, that's what I want to talk to you yes. about. Some oh. days they don't show up and they have to show up. Is that confusing for them? I, I'm not sure. For some, it might be. But for the most of them, it is not. No. Mm. No. Well, in New York, do you, do you have the, the Yankees? See, I got it That's right. right that time. That's very good. I'm no very fool. Good. You're doing better. I have American teeth and a Spanish mouth, so sometimes <laughs> I don't know which way to go. Yes, I see. I, I see. like your infield sometimes, I'll tell you that. <laughs> very good. Let me ask you this. New York is very, very excited. I saw the cover of the Sports Illustrated. Patrick Ewing is going to help your ball club a lot. <laughs> This guy, seven foot, he'll be nice. They hit a ball, boom, he stops and knocks it down. I, uh, uh, that's very good. I did my research, I'll tell you yes, that. I know. He will. He'll help us a lot. Let me ask you this, you know, did you have a nickname when you were in high school? You know, because my nickname was Spike. A lot of people don't know Spike? that. Spike? Were you Spanky? Were you, I got this no. guy, were you Spanky? <laughs> no, I wasn't. I was Alfalfa. You are? Yeah. Yeah. And were they, you had the hair yeah. up and the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Alfalfa's time. That's what I was. You mean in the hallway they go, hey, Alfalfa. That's you, right. That's go, right. Go fire the principal. That's did, right. Did you do that? That's right. Let me ask you this, darling. Sure. The Yankees are where now? We are right the night before the All-Star game. You were in, you were in the division. The Eastern division was your top. It's a tough Toughest division in, in the baseball, yeah. Why is that? Because there's not so many good places to eat in Cleveland? Is that right? <laughs> yeah, that, I come from Cleveland. Well, it's a, well, you didn't let me finish. It's yeah. one of the marvelous restaurant towns <laughs> yeah. in the American League, like Cleveland. I yeah. tell you, I had some ribs there that... Did I, you? I'm still taking some of oh, that yeah. out of my list. Yes, it's sir. a mar <laughs> Cleveland, you look marvelous, darling, and you know who you are. George, thank you so much for being at the Hollywood. Well, it, it was nice being here and this show with you. Well, George, I, I think... think you want with words, darling. Yes. You are marvelous. Thank you. Did you have one suit? Yeah, one coat. One? Three pants. One coat. It must be very hot. Yes. Putting the three pairs of pants. I'll tell you how right now. <laughs> We've been talking to Jorge Steinbrenner, the principal owner of the New York Yankees. Good luck to you, George. Thank you for being in the hideaway. Thank you, friend. My friends, we'll see you. Watch the All-Star game. And remember, it's better to look good than to feel good. Salute us, my friend. <laughs> Hello, I'm Pat Boone. Because April is the traditional month for baseball's opening day, Bob Euchre thought my recording of April Love would be a great campaign song for his Hall of Fame bid. So I, I said to Bob, think again, dog lips. <laughs> vote no on Euchre. To vote yes on Bob Euchre for the Hall of Fame, call 1-900-220-2111. To vote no on Bob Euchre for the Hall of Fame, call 1-900-220-2122. Each phone call will cost 50 cents.
there's a new game in town. It's called putting the fun back into driving. Introducing the Toyota MR2 Sports Car, a mid-engine, 16-valve, fuel-injected Playmate designed for the kind of performance that says, Look out, here I come. The Toyota MR2. So exciting, it just won Motor Trend's Import Car of the Year. The fun is back. Afraid? I ain't afraid of nothing. The bug killers people try on me are a <laughs> pushover. When are you folks gonna learn? There ain't nothing tough as me. Nothing. Why should I be a raid? Raid? Nobody kills more bugs dead than raid, and nobody does it deader. When it says raid, it kills bugs dead. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time right now for a very special part of the show. The greatest daredevil in the history of the world, Super Dave Osborne, has agreed to make his first network television appearance right here on our show. So we now take you out to Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California, for Mike Walden and Super Dave Osborne and the most unbelievable baseball stunt you've ever seen. Hello, everybody. This is Mike Walden, and I'm standing here in the infield of beautiful Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California. And today, the world will witness from this very stadium the most incredible stunt ever attempted. And here comes the man that I consider the greatest athlete performer in the world today, the one and the only Super Dave Osborne. Hi, Mike. As you can How see, you the Super One is riding his trusty Super Dave high-powered motorcycle, and he is resplendent, as Hello. usual, in his own unique colors of red, white, and blue. I think here he is now. Yes, welcome, Super Dave Osborne. Well, thank welcome. you very much, Mike. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'd like to say a special hello to the millions of people watching tonight. Ah, terrifically put as always, Super Dave. But look, let me get right to the point. Why are you risking your life this evening? Well, Mike, for those of you who are not familiar with my philosophy, I take one day at a time. I figure you only live once, and while you're living, you should try and fulfill every dream that comes your way. You know, time is a strange way of extending life from hours into days. And sometimes it can only limit a matter of... What did you ask me? Well, why are you risking your life with this stunt? Oh, for the money. Beautifully put, as always, Super Dave. Oh, thank you, Mike. All right. Now, I understand you have a very special introduction to make. Yes, I do, Mike. I'd like to introduce a man who has made my stunt possible this evening. He has spent the last three months preparing me, and he is truly as fine a human being as everyone thinks he is. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Steve Garvey. All right, the Garb. Steve Garvey of the San Diego Padres. You know, Mike, they say that probably the most difficult thing in sports to do is to hit a baseball. Well, what we'll be doing this evening has never been attempted before. Super Dave will hit a baseball thrown over 100 miles an hour, blindfolded. Blindfolded? Well, yes, Mike. As you know from covering hundreds of my stunts, that I have cat-like reflexes which allow me to sense objects in my area like an animal would. And Gar was able to see this and came up with the idea of possibly using that gift combined with a special concentration which he calls the Garvey Zone. And he has taught me to concentrate hard enough that I can almost hear the seams of the ball and know what kind of pitch it is. That's truly amazing. What? <laughs> also, I'd like to add a special surprise, that the man throwing the baseball today is probably the fastest pitcher in the game, the great Dwight Gooden. Oh, <laughs> Dwight Gooden of the New York Mets. Wow. Hi, Dwight. <laughs> Mike, before we start, I also want to say that I will donate every penny I make this evening to this great human being, and he can do with it what he wishes. Ah, I tell you, a beautiful gesture from one special human being to another. Well, I tell you what, Super Dave, call in your crew, get your equipment on so we can get this done underway, okay? Okay, Mike. All right. Guys? All right, I want you to put As you can see, Super first. Dave's crew yeah. has applied the right knee pad. Me. They're made from a component of polyurethane, sure specially imported for this very special stunt. Now the elbow pads. That's good. And now they're about to apply the blindfold. This is a very special blindfold made with Saskatchewan seal skin bindings. And I think the crew is ready now. While Super Dave is putting on his special equipment, Dwight Gooden will take a couple of practice pitches and we'll check out his speed and just to make sure how fast he's throwing. 
Happy. All right, that one was 97 miles an hour. All right, that was good, but we could have got Nolan Ryan to throw 97. Get it over 100 now. Let's check out this pitch. All right, 101 miles an hour. Now, that's great. Okay. I think Super Dave is already. The crew has him in here. Super, are you all ready? Yes, I'm ready, Mike. All right. We got to back up now. We got to get back in the batter's box here. Okay, remember now, our special open stance. Open it up a little. That's it. Okay, bend the knees a little. Get the hands back. Okay, get the tummy in a little. Okay, chin forward. Okay, remember the Garvey zone now. Good luck. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the first pitch into the left field bleachers. And I'm going to hit the second pitch completely out of the park and center. And I'll hit the third one off the right field fence. Right, let's get a man down. All right. Come on, Dwight, you wimp. Throw it in here. Dwight, you wimp. <laughs> Dave, you're all right. Oh. Think Garvey's on. It'll ease the pain. Ease the pain? I've got Spalding written on my. Damn it, Dave! Damn it, Dave! Now get him in the hospital. Oh, hey, help. Come on. Oh, I should have known better. Here we go. Super Dave, oh. Super Dave, are you all right? Oh, oh yeah, I'm fine, Yut. Garvey's on. Where did you come up with it? Think zone. Think yeah, zone. I'm thinking zone. Here, keep breathing. Keep oh. breathing. Okay. Why don't you put some Remember floor wax on your hair? <laughs> Okay. Oh. Take it easy now. Oh. Okay. Get him I think I hurt my fingernail. Fingernail. Oh, fingernail doesn't look. Help, Help me, guys. We gotta get him to the hospital. Oh. 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 Well, there you have it, folks. A one-in-a-million stunt accomplished by the only man on this grader who would ever dare to attempt it. This is Mike Walden with an elated Super Dave Osborne returning you to our program. No, wait, no. Get me an ambulance. I need an ambulance. Oh, thank goodness. Oh. Oh. You know, guys, perhaps inside the ambulance would be more comfortable. Remember, kids, don't try this stunt at home. And if you have an old all-star ballot lying around, why don't you write in the name Super Dave Osborne, D.H., deceased hero? <laughs> If you want to talk great baseball bars, this place is the end of the discussion. We're at Runyon's in New York City. Tonight, this legendary baseball watering hole adds to its fame by serving as the official campaign headquarters of the Bob Euchre for the Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> this is very exciting. You must be very... How do you feel, big guy? I feel great, Billy. I really do. Uh, you know, but it's the same problems. Autographs. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I haven't been asked to sign one yet. I can't figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, come on. Bob, seriously, when I started out performing, I had heroes. You know, most kids, when they play baseball, they had, it was uh, maybe Kurt Flood or Bob Gibbs. They had heroes. Mm -hmm. Mine were Ernie Kovacs and uh, Lenny Bruce and Bill Cosby. Who did you uh, love as a kid? I don't know. I guess, I don't know, Patrice Lumumba. I always liked Patrice him. Lumumba. <laughs> no, I... Uh, Couldn't I guess, go to uh, his left on no, a skull. He was too heavy for that side of the infield. <laughs> I, I, as an announcer uh, now, I had a I had a hero that uh, used to work the White Sox games, uh, Billy. That I I thought was outstanding. He was one of those unflappable types. And Who his was name he? was uh, Bob Elson. Bob Elson. And truly a great. Uh, he really was. And uh, with my version of Bob Elson doing a game, ninth inning with the White Sox, bases loaded, two to one. They're down to the Yankees, and they're down to their final out. Jimmy Landis, the hitter. And as I said, the Yankees haven't lost there in 10 years. And Bob Elson, a diehard White Sox fan, would do the play-by-play, -play, I would think, something like this. Well, there are two men out here in the White Sox ninth inning. And Chicago with a chance to win, but it'll take a big base hit by Louis Aparicio. We understand we have a bulletin, and I guess yours truly should have read this bulletin. Oh, here is a ball low and outside the little Louis. I should have read this bulletin some time ago, but right now the most important thing is a White Sox victory. The next offering to Aparicio is a strike, and the count is even. Well, we understand the Russians have launched four ICBM missiles headed toward the Chicago land area. How about that? But right now, let's get a base hit from Aparicio. <laughs> The next offering to Louie, and it's a ball low and outside. Well, some of the escape here is a swing and a miss. Two balls, two strikes now on little Louie. 
and the White Sox with a chance to win with a base hit. Well, some of the escape routes, as we see some of the bombs bursting over the right field area, I-94 headed toward the Milwaukee area might be your best route. If you are heading west, 45 toward Moline, you might want to stop here at the ballpark and pick up your tickets for the up and down series against Boston. That should be a beauty, depending on the condition of the ballpark, of course. Here is a swing and a pop-up, and this should do it. The you White want to Sox vote yes for Bob again. Uker for the Hall of Fame, Don't dial 1-900-220-2111. If you want to vote no, Sunday, dial 1-900-220-2122. Jersey Day, every youngster 14 and under receives a free cow. So long, everybody. Number one fries, number one soft drink, and make them super size. McDonald's chicken McNugget, value pack, gives you more of those number one tastes. Eleven McNuggets, super size fries, and a big, big Coke, I love those fries. It's a good time for the great taste. Eleven McNuggets, large Coke, more fries, for a limited time, so better hurry, guys. Old McDonald's, value pack. Here, Doris. Got a meeting in Davenport. Be back tomorrow. United Airlines salutes the first person who figured out that flying to a business meeting was a pretty good idea. Afternoon. Cars broke down a couple miles back. Gonna miss a big meeting in Davenport. That's so. Say, could you uh, fly me there and back? Let me get this straight. You want me to fly you there, sit there and wait for you while you have this meeting, then fly you back? Through the years, the Friendly Skies has flown a whole lot of business people. We found it pays to listen to them. Thanks for flying me. Next time, maybe you could have some coffee on board. You're not just flying. Let me get this straight. You want coffee on the plane while we're You're in the You're flying the Friendly Skies. <laughs> Michael J. Fox. You laughed with him in past family ties and in future movies. Now, love him in the present in Poison Ivy, next on NBC. After Paris fly, Mantle connects for a terrific wallop deep into the left field stand for a home run. Mantle wallops Meyer's first pitch for a grand slam home run. The slugger pounds the next one in the center field feature. His second homer of the series and seventh in postseason play. With one out in the Brooklyn fifth, Hodges rockets one of Larson's pitches to left center. However, it's Mantle's turn for feeling brilliant. It's kind of funny. When I was a kid back in Oklahoma, I used to dream about playing in the major leagues, but I never thought I'd ever make the Hall of Fame. Well, there it is, old number seven. And today, number seven really is old. I wonder if the old uniform would still fit. How do you open these things? Hey, 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 what are you doing there, pal? That's Mickey Mantle's uniform. You can't touch... Oh, Mickey. Mickey, Mickey Mantle in your hand. Oh, how are you? I'm Willie. I'm the security guard here. I protect your, your whole uniform here. Nobody gets near it. I guard everybody. See that? That's Ty Cobb's display over there. That's the only thing of carbs that won't get broken this summer. <laughs> you carry a gun? Oh, no, no. I, I got mace. You want to try some? <laughs> no, that's a little too painful for me. Yeah, tell me about it. You want to talk about some pain? The other night, I, I had nothing to do, you know. I'm just sitting around. 
So I took one of them... Um, a meat thermometer? Yeah, and I just shoved it into my ear, you know, just to see how far and I could get it to go. And it got stuck in there, it did. So I took one of them... Um, a fungal bat? Yeah, and just gave it a few extra wax. Boy, that, that stings. It sounds painful. It is. I hate when that happens. Well, it's really nice meeting you. Yeah, well, Mickey, don't go, okay? Can I show you something? You're gonna love this. Come here, come here. Look at this, Mick. Here, come over this way, right here. You know, Mickey, my whole life I've been talking about you. Now you're here. You know, my whole life, me and my friend Chris, we'd argue about who's better, Mays or Mantle, you know? he said, well, Mays made that great catch against Vic Wirtz, you know? Remember that catch? Yeah. And I said, you were so fast, you would have been waiting for it, you know? Mays was great, but you hit one 565 feet in Washington. Remember that shot? Yeah, I almost got all of that one. Yeah, well, I thought you were so strong. Here, sit down here, Mickey. You're going to love this. And I remember you made that great catch in Don Larson's perfect game. Going deep left center. Mickey catch it, saves the game, and hit the home and win it. Oh, don't tell me I don't know number seven. This is great. You're going to love this, Mickey. Here, sit here. There we go. These seats are from Ebbets Field. You wrecked that place a couple of times. Yeah, here we go. Here, watch this. Where is that? that that's Ebbets Field, huh? Yeah, that's, uh, that home run there went across uh, Bedford Avenue into that filling station across the street there. Guy said fill it up and a ball went in the tank. <laughs> you know, leaded ball. Yeah. yeah oh, this, now you're batting lefty here. Mm -hmm. Were you stronger from the left side or the right side? About the same. The reason I like to bat left-handed, I like to drag bunt like I did just then, you know? Yeah. Because I could run the first real fast. How fast was that? That's about 3-1. Well, you could play ping pong by yourself. <laughs> That's fast. There you are. Well, this is over to Duke's head. Yeah. He was great. He was a great That's player. when it was 461 feet to uh, right center there. It uh, was 480 behind the monuments. Now it's only 410. Boy, you could bunt one over. Mantle tears into it with a terrific cut. Shannon races to the fence, but it's a futile gesture. A tape measure blast crashes into the third deck in right field. This is the fantastic sort of moonshot that sets Mickey Mantle apart among slugs. It also shatters Babe Ruth's record, the most World Series homer, number 16 for the great Yankee switch in. You're the best, Mickey. You're the best i ever seen. Uh, it's really, it's, it's great to have you back. Thank you, Willie. It's great to be back. Yeah, you know, every time I look at it, I get teary eyed. You know, I, I hate when that happens. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All Star Sports Profile with Bumper Keneal. You know, first it was Joan Crawford's daughter, and then it was Betty Davis's daughter, and now along comes the daughter of legendary baseball great Babe Ruth. With us here in the studio today is Shelley Ruth, author of the latest bestseller. Bambino Dearest. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Shelley. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, Bumper. Oh, or as the Bambino would say, waiter, 12 more shrimp cocktails. You know, Shelley, I must say, you really bear no resemblance to your father. I know, Bumper. But as you can see by the picture on the back cover, I do bear a striking resemblance to my mother. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Uh... Shelley, talk a bit about the Babe's great love of baseball. The Bambino hated baseball. <laughs> yes, the Bambino always wanted to be a hairdresser. One time on the road, he disappeared for three days. They found him in a beauty salon outside Cleveland. Shaker Heights, I think. He loved working on society, ladies, and he had just finished this masterful blue rinse and said he looked so happy. <laughs> Uh, you know, I think the one story we, we find most admirable about the babe is when he went to the hospital and visited that sick kid and promised him that he would point to center field and hit a home run just for him. That never happened. <laughs> Wait a minute. I mean, he, he, he did point to center field and then hit that no, home run. No, 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 no. William Bendix pointed to center field and hit the home run in the movie. In reality, uh, the babe threw up and spent the afternoon in the bed next to the kid. <laughs> Hospitals made him nauseous. Uh, one, one last question then. Most of the biographies by children of celebrities stress the cruel aspects of their parents. Was the babe a cruel man? No, uh, no, he was gentle, very loving. Well, maybe he slipped up once. He tried to throw the Yankee manager, Miller Huggins, off a moving train. <laughs> How can you be really sure that happened? 
he used me to practice. I can show you. No, right that's here, fine. I have a... No, that's fine. Book? New book? More books? Oh, yes. Yes, I just finished a loving, laughing story about another sports hero we all respect and admire. Oh, that's great. What's it called? Lou Gehrig, axe murderer. <laughs> Tell you, ladies and gentlemen. Then I'm going to write a book, Carl Yastrzemski, The Real Boston Strangler. Shelly Blue. George Brett and the Pine Tar Chainsaw Massacre. Okay, Shelly. Tomorrow. Mickey yeah. Mantle, son of Satchel Page. Little Shelly Rue. You know. Steve Garvey, was he Bonnie or Clyde? He'll be back right after uh right after his words. Hi, this is Jamie Farr, baseball enthusiast and number one fan of the beloved Toledo Mud Hens. I say vote yes on Euchre for the Hall of Fame. Cause the nose knows. <laughs> To vote yes on Bob Euchre for the Hall of Fame, call 1-900-220-2111. To vote no on Bob Euchre for the Hall of Fame, call 1-900-220-2122. Each phone call will cost 50 cents. NBC's portion of the proceeds will be donated to charity. Our phone lines will be open till 6 p.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. The results will be announced on tomorrow night's All-Star pregame show. On deck, Bob Newhart, Reggie Jackson, Father Guido Sarducci, and Howard Cosell when the comedy salute to baseball returns. Nate and his pal Stan are painting guys who really prize those two scoops of plump juicy raisins in Kellogg's Raisin Bran. They got the job in hand, they're rolling walls, but Nate recalls those two scoops with that fiber-rich bran. Two scoops. I'm going back again. Whoa! He can't resist the tastiness in Kellogg's Raisin Bran. I don't know. What are you going to do? I don't know. I'd go to college. Me yeah. too. If I had the money. Yeah. So what are you going to do? I don't know. What are you going to do? You don't want those fries. What are you going to do, Jack? Eat your way to college? <laughs> really? really? I'm going to college on the new GI Bill. You serve full-time in the armed forces, or part-time in the reserves, and you earn a lot of money for tuition. The new GI Bill. Are you using that pickle? Now for young men and women in the armed forces. It's a great place to start. See your local recruiter. A comedy salute to baseball returns in a moment. An American tradition continues with a Midsummer's classic. Baseball's Night of Stars, the All-Star Game, Tuesday on NBC. I just have a feeling that there's something going on here. But he won't find out from Pierce. No comment. Plus, Larry and Dave learn the Heimlich maneuver tonight. Do you ever listen to your mother? Of course not. So why do you keep calling her all the time and running up those big phone bills? Listen to me. Get Sprint, and the two of you can have a nice long talk, because they'll save you some serious money. And they spent a billion bucks last year just to make sure you can hear your mother clearly. So, will you listen to her? This they can't guarantee. Call Sprint. Find out about it. Scott Tissue rolls out to a thousand sheets, so it lasts longer to save you money. Roll on. Scott Tissue, Scott Towels, Scotty, Scott Economy Pack napkins, the Scott Value products go a long way and save you money. Roll on and on. Doctors say President Reagan's tumor was cancerous, the latest at 11. Standing on the spot where Abner Doubleday invented baseball in 1839. It's pretty amazing. It's especially amazing when you stop to think about its rules and its subtleties. You stand here and you say to yourself, who thought of this and why? Which is exactly what Bob Newhart was doing the other day when we caught up with him in Dodger Stadium. The national pastime. What you see behind you are the Los Angeles Dodgers taking batting practice. You know, I got to thinking, uh, if Abner Doubleday had come up with a game of baseball today, 
we might not even know about it. See, games are, are marketed today. If you have an idea for a game, you go to a large conglomerate, and they know all about how to market the game. I imagine a phone conversation between Abner Doubleday and the head of one of these large marketing firms. Olympic Games. <laughs> what, what can I do for you, Mr. Doubleday? Okay, Abner. <laughs> you, have, you have this game. H how many couples, Mr. Doubleday? <laughs> 18 people. Well, see, see, the ideal game is that uh, two, three couples come over to the house, they get a little slack, and you, you can't play it in the house either. <laughs> see, you, you, got, you got two things against you right there, Mr. Double A. Hmm? Why, why don't you tell me a little bit about it? Nine, nine guys on each side. Ladies don't play, Mr. Double A? <laughs> well, they, they might be a little ticked off, you know. Go, go ahead. Uh, nine, nine guys on each side. A, a what? A, a pitcher <laughs> and, and a catcher. And, and what, what do they do, Mr. Double A? They, they throw this ball back and forth. <laughs> and, that, and that's it, is it, is it Mr. Double A? <laughs> A guy, a, guy, a guy from the other side stands between him with a bat. <laughs> and he, and he, he swings at it, does he, Mr. Double A? <laughs> he, he may or he may not swing at it. <laughs> why, why, why wouldn't he swing at it, Mr. Double A? If it looked like it were going to be a ball. Huh? What's, what's, a, what's a ball, Mr. Doubleday? Uh -huh. you, you, have, you have this plate, uh -huh. and it, as long as it's <laughs> above the knees and, and below the shoulders, that's, that's a strike. Uh-huh. Three, three strikes. Three strikes and you're out. <laughs> and then uh, three, three balls. Four balls. Uh -huh. <laughs> why, why, why four balls, Mr. Double A? <laughs> no, one, no, no one ever asked you before. <laughs> is, is this one of the guys in the office? <laughs> uh, uh, is this you? <laughs> Mr. Double I, I don't care about the infield fly rule. Mr. Double A, that is the most complicated game I've ever heard of in my life. But, but listen, you, you come up with any, anything, two, three couples, you, you be sure and let us know. <laughs> nice, nice on you, Mr. Double A. Goodbye. Oh. Hank Aaron. <laughs> Euchre. Hammer, I need your help on this baseball. Bob Euchre. Hammer! It, remember the what? <laughs> Henry! All-Star Sports Bulletin. Well, baseball commissioner Peter Ubrock came down hard on Yankees manager Billy Martin today after his most recent altercation. Martin's appealing what he terms cruel and unusual punishment. The fine levied was as follows. Martin is to receive a controlling interest in the L.A. Express of the USFL. <laughs> also, as part of his community service punishment, Martin must either attend seven indoor soccer games or view 15 episodes of The Scarecrow and Mrs. King. I love it here. I love everything about it. When I come to the ballpark, it makes me feel young again. And believe me, that's no small achievement with these creaking bones. I love it because baseball is a world suspended in time. The names, the salaries, the uniforms, even the playing fields sometimes change. But the heroes in the great moments, they remain forever. Preserved by the amber of sweet memory. Baseball is Lou Gehrig, expressing for all time how each one of us feels when we put on the uniform and go to work. Today, today. 
I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Baseball is Babe Ruth hitting another home run on his way to 714. The record that no one would break until... Henry Aaron came along and hit his 715th one night in Atlanta. Baseball is Ty Cobb slashing his way to 4,191 hits. Another record that couldn't be broken until... Pete Rose came along to play forever, slapping line drives all around the ballpark while his hat flew one way and his body the other. Baseball is the Orioles' Rick Dempsey, remembering the show must go on, even during a rain delay. And my old pal Earl Weaver, a one-man show whenever he was carrying on. Baseball is Don Larson throwing his perfect game in the Fall Classic, then catching Yogi, who caught him all afternoon. Don Larson had his perfect game in the 1956 World Series. Mr. October had his 1977. Three swings, three homers. Sorry about that. Just couldn't help myself. That Mr. October, personally, he is my favorite player, one of my biggest heroes. And that is one of my favorite moments. And besides, as the man says, it ain't bragging if you can do it. It was the love that warmed our hearts. The vision that lifted our spirits. The film that touched our souls. I'm keeping him. Share the human experience of Steven Spielberg's E.T., the extraterrestrial, the story that touched the world. Rated PG. Starts Friday at select theaters. Weekend in the morning. Gotta get an omelet. Gotta get to Denny's. Got to get an omelet. A three-egg omelet. Got to, got to, got to. We need to order just for you, yeah. We cut. We crack. serve you any one of our omelets cooked to order for just $2.99 now through August 31st. Jenny's in the morning, we're cooking breakfast for you. Riding along in my GTI, my baby's sitting by my side. I stole a kiss to the turn of a mile, my curiosity running wild. And playing the radio with no particular place to go. The new Volkswagen GTI is fun, even with no particular place to go. GTI, Motor Trend's Car of the Year. It's a hot one out there today as Peterman starts his engine. The field is wide open. Gatorade is thirsty. Dembrowski picks up speed and breaks away. Gatorade is thirsty. Here's Evans showing some hustle against the youngsters. When you exercise, you lose potassium, fluids, minerals. Gatorade Thirst Quencher helps put them back fast. That's why the pros drink it. It's Thirst Aid. Gatorade is Thirst Aid for the deep down body thirst. And the crowd goes wild. We're at Trainee's Majestic, the oldest Italian restaurant in Los Angeles, for Tommy Lasota's monthly Linguini and Baseball Dinner, which is held whenever possible to benefit charity. And covering the event for L'Osservatore Romano is Father Guido Sarducci. Hey, this is Father Guido Sarducci. I'm here at the Baseball Linguini Dinner. It's a great. Every month this is done here in Los Angeles, California. With me is, is uh, Tommy Lasorda who's the uh, manager of the Los Angeles uh, baseball team, named the... Dodgers. Dodgers, <laughs> right. Dodgers. <laughs> Mr. Lasorda, could you please, thank your expert, explain to the people what is linguine? Linguine is a class of pasta. It's healthy for you. <clears throat> it gives you the opportunity to uh, withstand a long day's hardship. Don <laughs> Mappatano, you're the coach. You work... With Mr. Lasorda, right. you're his assistant. That's right. As his assistant, what are you doing exactly? Do you cut the linguine? <laughs> uh, 
are, are you in charge of like putting it into the boiling water? You're in charge of putting the sauce on it? What's your duties exactly? My duties are exactly to make sure that the fork has the proper prongs on it because Tommy doesn't like the linguine to slip too much. So we go for a four-prong fork. Right. That's very important. And that sign is usually like this here. That means that that night we're going to have the four-prong fork. Four-prong. Pretty good. You know, Mr. So, there's so many great Italian uh, baseball coaches. Yogi Bear, uh, Billy Martin, Jim Fregos, Joe Torre. I could go on and on. Uh, who do you think makes the best linguine? Well, without a, without a doubt, uh, my third base coach, Joey Amalfitano. Joey Amalfitano, he's the best. <laughs> hey, if I, if I could uh, change the subject a little bit. Sure. Looking into the golden, golden globe of the future, right. say baseball, the year 2000, we going to see linguine at the ballpark? I think it should be served at the ballpark. I think linguine will eventually replace hot dogs, beer, and pizza. That's what I hope. Hey, I got an idea. I got an idea here. I want to know what you think of this. Could you hold this yes. for a second? Uh -huh. I don't know if it's going to go or not, but it's my own idea. It's a, it's a baseball card with a linguine. <laughs> Instead of all the time, you know, gum, gum, it's a bad for right. your teeth. You get a linguine with the baseball. Look, I got a Frank Viola, right. Chris Bano, yeah. Steve Balboni, Body. Jack Sponge. It's all Italian, huh? Oh. Right? Here's Billy Crystal with a tribute to Yankee clubhouse attendant Pete Sheehy. How you doing, Rick? Okay, Pete. Good. Take a shave, you're a ball player. Yeah, I've been watching rookies a lot of years, and I can pretty much tell who's gonna make it and who ain't gonna be up here long enough for the coffee to get cold. And every once in a while, some, some kid walks in here with something extra. Garrick had it. Demadge had it. Mickey had it. You know, they, these are the guys when they walk through the door over there, some special kind of just walks in with them, you know. These kids today are good, but I don't think they love the game like the old timers did, you know? They're businessmen now, not just ball players. I, I don't know if anybody today will say, hey, let's play two today. Nah, nah. Now, now when they hear double header, the kids are on the phone to their agents going, do I get paid extra for two? I tell you, this clubhouse used to be a lot quieter in the old days. Now they got these big fancy Dan stereos. I tell you, they're so loud. And you mix that with the sound of them hair dryers, it could drive you crazy. Joe Peppertone. Peppy had the first hair dryer I ever seen. And I come in, Peppy's bouffanting up his hair. It's up like this. He looked crazy. I said, Joe, what are you doing? You're a ball player, bouffant. Do you know what the babe, what the babe himself would do if he ever seen some kid using a hair dryer bouffanting up his hair, we'd be on the train, right? And babe would see this wethead, he'd hold that kid outside the speeding train by his heel till his hair got dry. That would be a hair dryer to the babe, I'll tell you that right now, bouffant. Mm. Night, Pete. Night, Russ. I tell you, I love the game. But I think baseball made a big mistake with just two little words. Guaranteed contract. Some of these kids, they get a million dollars guaranteed. And then the agent arranges what they call an incentive clause. I says, if you're making a million dollars guaranteed, what do you need for an incentive, you know? Some of these kids, they, they need a little motivation once in a while. They get a little lazy, because it's all guaranteed. You know what I would do to motivate them? I'd announce their salaries when they're up at bat. That's what I would do. Watch baseball and me? I'll tell you. Baseball and me is them great fans up in Boston at Fenway, waiting for Yaz to take a farewell lap around Fenway Park. He played there for 23 years, Yaz. No free agent for him. These days, the back of a baseball card looks like a train schedule. I'll tell you that right now. Baseball is the match, being as classy today as he was back then. Baseball's this guy, Phil Negro. 
You know, Phil's older than I am. <laughs> Baseball's the sound that ball makes in batting practice when there's nobody around. That's when I like to go down to the field. There's nobody there. And I look out, and in right field, there's the babe shagging flies. Mickey and Joe D running in center field without a care in the world. It's little Whitey throwing shutouts in the World Series. That's baseball to me. You know, people say to me, they say, Pete, what kind of job do you got? You do laundry, you make sure that, they, that the shoes are shined, you give them tobacco and gum and all that kind of stuff. What kind of job is that? And I tell them, look, every day that I wake up, I feel exactly like Lou Gehrig did. I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. That's all. That's it, and that's all. But what is this? Tobacco stain. See, that's one thing that hasn't changed. Tobacco stain. 57 years I'm here, there still ain't no good way to get tobacco out of a uniform. Ah, these kids. When you chew, you're supposed to spit out, not on yourself. What do I have to do, get your bib, your big baby? Uh, if you're gonna chew, you gotta be responsible, that's it. Give me this stuff, look at this. Look at this thing here. Look at this. Bob Euchre, Hall of Famer. It's got a nice ring to it. Of course, my bathtub has a ring to it also. <laughs> Vote no on Euchre. To vote yes on Bob Euchre for the Hall of Fame, call 1-900-220-2111. To vote no on Bob Euchre for the Hall of Fame, call 1-900-220-2122. Each phone call will cost 50 cents. NBC's portion of the proceeds will be donated to charity. Our phone lines will be open till 6 p.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. The results will be announced on tomorrow night's All-Star pregame show. And now, All-Star Sports Update. Atlanta Braves owner Ted Turner formally withdrew his offer to purchase CBS and instead took a lease option on the state of Louisiana. <laughs> Asked why he withdrew the offer to CBS, Turner replied, it was too high a price to pay just for the privilege of firing Phyllis George. <laughs> Everybody knows pouring water on ordinary dry dog food won't make gravy. Gaines Gravy Train makes the gravy your dog is craving. Ordinary dry just gets watered down. Gravy Train dog food makes rich, delicious, real beef gravy. Nope, pouring water on ordinary dry just gets your dog wet. Gravy Train makes the gravy your dog is craving. And now we introduce the delicious taste of cheddar cheese with new Gravy Train beef and cheese flavor. Want to build a super day? Then start with the one great taste that makes a super bowl of cereal. Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Just think of crispy golden flakes. Delicious, crunchy flakes of corn. So pure and simple, just can't wait. Low in sugar, loaded with vitamins and iron. So good for you, don't hesitate. For a super bowl of our most nutritious corn flakes ever. What a super bowl. Have yourself a super bowl. Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Thursday on Cheers, you'll scream when you find out why Carla turns down a marriage proposal. And on Night Court, when Dan finds Miss Wright, will everything go wrong? He's getting married. Let the good times roll. Then on Hill Street, will J.D.'s explicit undercover tapes have him up on charges? What you do, charge 50 cents ahead? Hey, Thursday. I took my degree and put it to work in the Peace Corps. The United States Peace Corps, the toughest job you'll ever love. We're at Jackie Robinson Intermediate School, across the street from the site of the old Ebbets Field, where Howard Cosell pays tribute to an old friend. It was April 15, 1947, and there would be inaugurated on that day a change in the whole social structure of our country, and it took a black baseball player to do it. His name was Jackie Roosevelt Robinson. He wore number 42, and on that day, the world began to learn about a pigeon-toed, knock-kneed man who may indeed have been the greatest athlete all around that this country has yet produced. He played the unfamiliar position of first base that day, and he opened a whole new world in the process. He would show the world, backed by the council in support of the legendary Mr. Branch Rickey, what a man could do with a restraint in the face of a vile abuse almost too incredible to even conceive. Martin Luther King. 
once told me that he didn't think the civil rights movement could take place in this country had it not been for Jackie Robinson. And in speeches, he publicly acknowledged the fact he was a remarkable man. He would show the world how to fight adversity on the family scene, lose a son, battle the most virulent form of diabetes ever. And he would go to his death saying, I have had a great life. He was, in a word, unconquerable. That was Jack Roosevelt Robinson. It's been a good night. We've shed some laughs, rekindled some fond memories, and hopefully we've reminded you that baseball is more than just our national pastime. It's also a good, dependable friend. Hey, Billy, stop talking. Let's play some kids. I love when this happens. Good night. You want a knuckleball? Give me a knuckler. Ooh. I like Negroes, huh? No. He's younger than you. Show me that. This is Dick Tufel for a comedy salute to baseball. Don't make me run out. I'm not going to make you run. If I can still run, I'll still be playing. <laughs>